introduction. So diverse marine life require responsible harvesting. So as top predator, we as human must use proper techniques for sustainable practice. So in this pro mini project, we actually spotlight five commonly consumed organisms, which is oyster, prawn, fish, crab, and squid. So we cover their names, harvesting, cooking, and guide life for ethical practice to ensure the seabed and environmental preservation. Well, sleeper oyster is an economically important species of true oyster found in abundantly in Western Pacific Oceans, Philippines, and Malaysia. The scientific names of sleeper oyster initially is called cross cross crossotia iridium, but now it have changed to Magdalena bilinita. Well, for the local name, it's called tiram. Well, the first way is hand picking in the area where the water is shallow. Individual may simply wade in and hand pick the oyster from the seabed. Well, the second way is oyster seed collector. It is the, the traditional seed collector is set the spat settled on the anti oyster shells, maturing to a harvestable size. These oyster beds are most often placed in an interdictal zones to strengthen the master of the oyster, while the more modern way is include the oyster heads. Uh, compose and modify drain pipes. The oyster spats collector trays are used primarily on dado flats to collect the seed in the interdictal zones, but in most of the situations, the collector is covered in a thin layer of cement, lime, and sand mixture to access in setting. The market price for sleeper oyster is around 10 to 14 ringgit per 500 grams. And sleeper oyster plays an important role in ecosystems. Uh, especially the oyster reef create an important habitat for hundreds of species. Organisms like mussels and sea animals settle on them, creating burden of food sources for commercially valuable fish. Oyster reefs provide habitat to uh, forage fish, invertebrates, and other shellfish. Besides being a seafood, oyster also make the water healthier because oyster feed filtering algae from the water. They functions as a natural filter and improve the water overloaded with nutrients. Under certain conditions, a single oyster can filter up to 550 gallons of water per day. The clearer and cleaner waters can support plentiful underwater grasses, which like the oyster reefs, can create a stable bottom up and a safe nutrition habitat for, Julie, for the crabs, scallops, and fish. Hello, my name is Amber Petsila with Nabometric 78773. Let's moving on to the next aquatic organisms, which is prawn. Prawn scientifically can be known as Dendrobranchiata, locally known as Payasia and Laka in Sarawak. Dendrobranchiata are mostly found in a fresh water area. There are many types of prawn in Malaysia, which is Udang Galah, Udang Lipan, Udang Merah, and many more. There are a few techniques on catching prawns such as prawn traps or pots, trolling, cast netting, seed netting and hand scooping. As you can see, the prawn traps over here, also known as pots or cages, are widely used for catching prawns. These are bait traps with openings that allow prawns to enter but make it challenging for them to escape. People often use fish heads or other seafood to attract prawns into the traps. After they are settled preparing the traps, they are typically left the traps in the water for a certain period and then pull up the traps to collect the catch. Prawns are easy to be found in the fresh market in Malaysia with the price approximately between 20 ringgit to 50 ringgit according to its sizes where it's quite expensive to some people. Prawns is widely hunted to be used as food rich in protein and chitin. There are numerous delicious ways to cook prawns such as grilling, boiling, stir frying, deep frying, roasting, curries, and so much more. Prawns are a sustainable source of food when producers have minimal impacts on wild species and the environment. When it comes to prawn consumption, sustainability guidelines can be vary depending on the species and the methods of capture or farming. I am Muhammad Irfan Hazib in Oslan with matrix number 82737 and I will be presenting about squid. Little squid or Urotutis chinensis is one of the most common aquatic animals that can be found in Malaysian waters. 
This grape is prized for its thick flesh and sweet flavor. All right, with no further ado, let's jump into the fishing techniques that Malaysians use to capture these squids. The first one is jigging. Jigging is a fishing method where artificial lures that look similar to small fish or sometimes crustaceans are used to attract and hook squids. This method is relatively cheap as it does not use expensive gears. However, it is labor intensive and sometimes susceptible to bycatch. The second fishing technique is purse seining. Purse seining is when large purse seines are deployed to surround schools of squids. This will trap the squids when the net is drawn close. This method is highly efficient as a large amount of squids can be captured this way. However, as it involves large nets, it is an expensive method and this can lead to overfishing. So our last fishing techniques is like fishing. As the name suggests, this method uses likes as attraction for the squids. When the squids are successfully gathered, they will be captured using nets. This is effective as squids are sensitive to light. However, it requires specialized equipment and can even cause light pollution. Are squids safe and sustainable as a source of food? This question depends on various factors such as carbon footprint, impact to the biodiversity, and fishing method. From the aspect of carbon footprint, squids has low carbon footprint compared to red meat and some fin fish like tuna because squid produce around 6.3 kg carbon dioxide equivalent per kilogram, while beef generates around 15.5 kg carbon dioxide equivalent per kilogram. Next, from the impact to the biodiversity, most of the catching method of these squids can lead to bycatch. This will harm non-target species and disrupt the ecosystem. The next factor is from fishing method. If we have to compare which fishing method should we practice, it will be jigging and like fishing. This is because like, like fishing and jigging have lower bycatch rate compared to press seining. By the way, the local price in Malaysia for these squids are 15 ringgit to 25 ringgit per kilogram. Okay, so some of the common preparation methods for squids are as follows. Stir fry, grilling, deep fry, raising, stuffed squid, and steam. The picture on the left is deep fry squids, and the picture on the right is braised squids. Last but not least, this is our final part for giant squids, which is alternative fisheries options. While like fishing and jigging is better than per scenes, they still have a chance to have high bycatch rate. So our team has proposed an idea to use traps and pots. What is traps and pots? Traps and pots are enclosed structures designed to capture squids without impacting non-target species. So their designs should be according to the sizes of the squids that want to be captured. These will prevent larger and smaller individuals, including other species, from getting trapped. Also, we should use biodegradable materials so they, if they get lost, these traps and pots can decompose naturally and will not impact the environment. Also, the last point is to choose the appropriate mesh size. This will allow smaller squids and other marine life to escape through the gaps, preventing their capture. Yeah. Hi, my name is Lysin Er with matrix number 79812. So the aquatic organism that I picked uh, to present it is Spanish mackerel. So uh, the Spanish mackerel, locally known as Ikan Tenggiri Batang in Malay. So it is scientifically identified as Scomboromos commerson. So now let's explore the habitat of this incredible species. So um, the Spanish mackerel is a pelagic fish, meaning it thrives in open waters, tropically fall at depth ranking from um, 15 to 200 meters. So this sea predator have a preference for coastal area. So yeah, we often found them forming in group, not just for protection, but also for feeding and spawning. So Spanish mackerel usually exhibit a regional stability, staying within the same geographical areas. Okay, so one of the fishing techniques of a uh, Spanish maker is floating life bed. So anglers strategically position their beds on the surface or mid water, tapping into the hunting instinct of Spanish maker. So beyond the tranquility of leaf 
live bat, the Malaysian angling scenes we infuse and rely with the technique of throwing, jigging, and casting. So um, Spanish mackerel also known for their rare sharp teeth, so that require a robust defense. So angus turn to use the steel wire not only for the rulers but also um, as a shield from their bats. So and to ensure a successful catch without losing their gear. The Spanish mackerel a safety food to be eat to be consumed. So it is a must to minimize the carbon footprint. Therefore, it is. It is the necessity for us to adopt the eco-friendly practice throughout the supply chains. So uh, it can from the sustainable fishing method to efficient transportation and eco-conscious processing. So yeah, I'm sure by embracing this practice, we contribute to a healthier planet. So um, next, the sustainable fishing practice are designed to maintain a balanced ecosystem. It can prevent the over-exploitation and preserving the diversity of marine uh, species. Um, crucially, it is responsible harvesting involved selective technique like hook and line or pool and line fishing. It can minimize um, the bycatch and reducing the impact of on the non-target species. Yeah. So Spanish mackerel is a fantastic food. They can be cooked in many ways like grilling, baking, frying, or even in a tasty service. So people who love cooking really like its firm and flavorful fresh. So in Malaysia, Spanish mackerel is a favorite ingredient. It is used in a local dish such as a flavorful curries and uh, the tasty gyro seafood platters. So this uh, Spanish mackerel act a unique test to these dishes and making it a must have in every Malaysian's meal. My name is Ahmad Adwa bin Burhan and I will explain to you about the giant mud crab with the scientific name of Sela Serata. Uh, for the locals, the crab is known as Ketam Nipa, which it is associated to the Jaya habitat which near the Nipa plum of the Mingguf area. The crab is catched by using a bento, which is a kind of trap. The bento is made up from rotan or a small metal rod that tight crossover and inside the bento it is installed with baits as example a small piece of meat or small fish to attract the crab. At the market, the crab price are sorted according to the size. For the small size, the price is around 50 ringgit per kilogram. For the medium size, the price range is start from 65 ringgit to 80 ringgit per kilogram and the price may hit 100 ringgit per kilogram for the large size. There are several cooking style for the crab such as boiling, steam and stir fry which is the most preferable cooking style. But the crab need to be cleaned thoroughly before cooking to avoid the contamination. Some of the example for the stir fry cooking style is butter crab with salted egg, masala mud crab, and chili sauce crab. To answer the question if the crab is safe to eat, yes, it is safe since the crab itself contains various kinds of protein, omega-3 fatty acid, vitamin B2, and the meat of the crab may help our nervous system. In conclusion, this assignment depends on our understanding of the importance of aquatic organisms in our diet. We explore five distinct species delving into their classification, capture methods, pricing and cooking techniques. The project provided a valuable insight into unique characteristics and enhanced our knowledge of aquatic habitats. Despite challenges, we enjoy the task and recommend similar projects to broaden our understanding of aquatic ecosystem in the future. This is all from us. Thank you.